so we are going to deal with measles and rubella okay we have two infectious diseases so as usual any this is outline of the introduction epidemiology etiology pathogenesis clinical manifestations diagnosis and differential diagnosis management outcome and any prophylaxis we are going to deal with it sounds clear sir there is echo echo coming no yes sir i don't know how to handle with this echo just one minute i'll try it I speak hello 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 yeah. hello i think there is no echo hello on to aje aire chu to aire acha aje aje aire chu ali kom cha ali kom uh understandable chai chan ta disturbing cha bujh na to bujh na to bujh na to bujh na bujh na to bujh na to bujh na so i'll tomorrow i'll manage it i don't know how, why this today Okay. So it is uh, uh, introduction. So measles. So sometimes we call it nebulous measles. Do you know? Anyone? What we call it measles? Dadura. Okay, bro. Dadura. That is a good. That is a problem. Hmm. <laughs> okay, measles. <clears throat> Sometimes we call it this rubella. Okay, this medical term. Measles is a general term. No? So it is measles is a highly contagious, exanthematous, infectious disease, which is caused by a virus, specifically a paramyxo virus of genus. Morbelli virus, okay. Usually, which is caused by, oh, sorry, characters by which is characterized by clinically as coryza, cough, conjunctivitis, which could be followed by a diffuse macular papular rash in the introduction. So we'll we'll going to deal with it different how it comes, okay, clinically. So epidemiological point of view, you can say that it was prior to. Vaccine, okay. It is developed in nineteen sixty-three. It was a long way back. Again, it was universal infection. That means universal infection. That means if you get infected or infection and you get contact with, you will get anyhow, okay. So prior to, so this is the uh, under five, okay. Or maybe children. Children are most affected. W is a leading cause of death is among the young children. This. Okay. Despite the availability of the safe and effective vaccines, it's one of the leading causes of death in children. And then more than 20 million okay people in world worldwide are affected by the measles. See, mostly in under uh, developed country like and African, okay, like this. So it was in 2000 some estimation was made, okay, 160,000 death, okay, in 2008. now it is declined by the because of you use that what vaccine we have globally slow case fell and mortality came down to 60% okay falling down 60% in 1990 99 in 2000 okay five now the it has come down to 78% fall in 2008 occurring within the south east okay asian region 
So it was global target was a 95% reduction of the measles like okay, mortality by 2015, which was a targeted when 2000. Now 2000, 20 you know, okay, it's been cheap. So as Nepal, we have an incidence of the 5.5 to 4.5 in per lakh population. Still we have okay, sporadic cases of the measles. So etiologically, as I've mentioned about, this is viral disease, especially you know from the course of um, microbiology, that's paro, paro, mixo, very okay, and, which is single-stranded RNA virus disease, and which is size around 100 to 200 nanometer in diameter, which is quite small. Family is called Morbillivirus, virus, okay, virus, sorry. And usually it contains, it's about a little bit of, uh, about your intelligence, contains six structural proteins. This virus contains so three that are like complex to RNA and three that are associated with the viral membrane proteins. Uh, sorry, uh, envelope, okay, membrane envelope. So there are two clinical importance, right? that is a fusion protein and then H hemagglutinin. Okay. So fusion protein usually what happens? It helps you responsible for okay, sorry, responsible for fusion of virus and the host cells membrane. What's viral penetrates and leading to hemolysis. Another is H and hemagglutinin, which protein is responsible for the adsorption of the virus to your cell. So it is good that we have only one serotype, okay, antigen of measles virus and no subtypes say to be recognized to date. So that maybe that's why we have stable and vaccine. There's no frequency of antigen chains like a shears or rave, which will be difficult to get in vaccine stable. So how the transmit uh, the infection get transmitted? Of course, this is our okay. measles virus usually spread by respiratory route. So measles spread out through the aerosol or secretion through your nose, or when you just sneeze or maybe something. So it is highly contagious. I will mention about that's ninety percent of the people without immunity sharing in a house okay, with an infected person, you are likely to get. So that's why highly contagious. Okay. Average incubation period of tends to be fourteen days. This and ranges from them sometimes six to so 19 days, but an average in 14 days, you will have an old clinical manifestation. Incubation, and after that, we'll have incubation, uh, so clinical manifestation, okay, first incubation. And the infectivity, okay, of this disease lasts four days prior to, and then four to six days following the onset of rashes. I'll discuss about it, how the rash will look like. We haven't come to the clinical aspect of this disease. So there are certain risk factors involved, okay? Risk factors for the severe, for the severe sort of measles. measles. Those are the malnutrition, okay? Like you, you, you could get the measles, but uh, those could, uh, effect, could be affected with, uh, severely, like the malnutrition condition, Immunodeficiency or occurred or congenital, whatever they are, okay, irrespective of the immunizations. Pregnancy. Vitamin A deficiency. Okay. And travel to, of course, there's an endemic areas. Infants would lose passive antibodies prior to the age of routine immunizations. Usually we give it on a nine months, okay? Okay, six months, by six months, it loses the, your acquire immunity from your mother's that's what this name nine, nine, six, six. Okay, nine. so much equals history hello okay so how did this is okay develop you so of course then as the virus gets into your body gets to a replication okay first it comes to can left no okay lymph node, okay, lymph node, the adaptation will take place or damages to your lymph node. 
Maybe that's good reason why then in lymphocytopenia or something. So this is the reticular in the system is kind of first, okay? They adapt there and then multiplication will from there, this sit back, this virus sit back to your bloodstream. That's the first viral immune. Okay? It doesn't have any clinical manifestations yet. Okay? Now from these the blood, they can move to end up affecting the body or like then your different visceral organ or again. Okay? So even in skin, every respiratory system. There are that is then they will viral will share you know from there. So again they reach the our other part of the reticular in the cell system, like the you know, the bone marrow or maybe other spleen, okay, the other parts. The adaptation will take place, okay? And then the multiply and then they come back to the, your circulatory. This is a called a secondary virion, okay, which is now the secondary virion may at the time it may coincide with your clinical manifestations. So this is an after that we will just incubant period takes completed and then this is a clinical we call poor hormone followed by secondary okay the virion and viral st shedding starts. If you look at the uh, pathological end, path you can find like if everything you necrosis, giant cells, and formation in them. Okay, it's a pathological point of view, histology, or you just look at pathology. So, <clears throat> eruptions will occur, like then, that is a rash, okay, on the skin. So, not in any other exanthematous. Why I'm calling it exanthematous? Exanthematous in the not in the mucous membrane of the side of this outer skin. That is exanthematous, okay, eruption. We have another reason, this enanthematous, okay, that is in the mucous membrane also, like we have that is, this is basically exanthematous sort of uh, rashes will occur, okay, we can observe. So, and then followed by recovery, that is a graph also showing there is some little bit of Lymph board, the bridal steady, six, seven days, seven days, and then again, secondary, okay, virus growth in the body surfaces, and then it's shedding uh, and comes to your respiratory system as well as, and we have shedding starts and viral from your the clinic, like the cough, horizon, all this. So now this public sport, I'm going to deal with later on. What is that, okay? There is some public sport, and the third. These are all the incubation period coming, okay, complete. Now the rashes on the third or fourth, sorry. Fourth day of, again, that is all coming to the clinical section. So this is just after the rash, okay, immune system develops, okay. So it's sharing. Viral shedding ligaments, clinical manifestation taking place, and then the rashes, okay? And the slowly rashes going down on the body. And then by the time you're 13, 14, and your immune system kicks on, like the like immune globin starts to formation this antibodies are recovery on that is mean recovery. So how the patient will come to you, that's very important. And then here is a clinician. So you know that I've mentioned about it, okay? Every, I mean, uh, infectious disease, you have the incubation period. That is some, this is 14 days, ranging from six months. The early symptoms, the patient may come to you within a prodromal phase marked by malaise, okay? Malaise, fever, or anorexia. These are non-specific. Non and then some sort of viral fever, like a conjunctivitis, you have one. Is cough, and then coriza. Okay, that is three C's with only short. The red eyes, okay, the coughing and the runny noses, like the virus. This picture, which is the early symptoms. They come, but you cannot make it out what is happening with it. Okay, but this, you can make, at that early phase, you might think about any sorts of viral infection. Um, but, and um, complex sport, what's the complex sport now? There is small, okay, in a buckle, 
that is three molar in gingival or okay, levial mucosa prize. Okay, there's, there's a sandy and grayish small macula, okay? One to two mm size of you can see in the, okay, in the buccal mucosa at the level of premolar, gingival, or maybe labial mucosa or prior to manifestation of the rash in your body, okay? Here we don't have any rashes, okay? This is it. That can be seen. That is not always found, okay? You could miss it in the when patient come to you, okay? So one or two millimeter size, small size, okay? I'm showing, going to show it. How does it, this is what okay? Prior to the manifestation of this is the small range, okay. This picture is being enlarged, so it looks big, big, but actually, it's not small, sandy one or two mm size. Where is cursor? Work here, okay. This is good. Complex spots. It's a pathogenic, okay? If you see, not always, but when you, if you see that this is a patho complex spots, okay? Some patient come to you, they stay up for two or three days of it, and you know, conjunctivitis, or mean cough, you, you just got to look into the surface. Huh? Is there any complex spots developing? If it's developing, then yes, now you can say, yes, and next you will have the rashes. So it will when your clinical diagnosis and measles, you know? So now this is what I mean here, the coplic spots. Sorry. Okay, coplic spots. Then followed by or two or three days goes or run like this clinical pictures, okay? They may present to you. And then Fourth day of, okay, that is the rash is typical, the rash is disease, this is okay. My rash, you can now make sure that this is the typical sort of, okay, measles. As the fourth day of, okay, the disease now. We have the rash is a leading manifestation now, comes, which is what sort of type? So there's a macular, macular, and sometimes a papular, okay, macular, papular, sort of. Rashes, which usually you have to describe, you know, you cannot write like the measles, rash, fever, cough, because I, it does not signify. You have to in, write in, in detail, okay? And uh, like there is fever, cough, fever is lasted for two, three days, okay? And then fourth day, there will be the right. On the before, okay, rash, maybe there will be some, okay? Public sports, okay. You have to mention it, and then we can understand that you are writing about the clinical scenario. Measles, otherwise, if you ask, then you are writing. We found that uh, there is fever, rash, cough, and then uh, there are so many, and in many diseases, they have rashes and fevers. It does not signify. So, you have to clearly, okay, mention it that and fourth day of uh, the rashes, okay. Macular papular erythematous rash that involves palms and soles. Usually it is spreads from cavara. It's from the hairline of the front. Okay. This hairline and it spread slowly and then posterior auricular only and then it is and goes bowly. Caudal means down, okay? So you're spreading down, shoulder, neck, shoulder, then down. Okay. Over the next three days, it reaches down to your soul and palm, all this. Whole body. Hmm? This is what the picture look like. This is the picture. Hmm? You can see the baby. All oh, that just initially comes from the hair lines and faces and it is downward. Then slowly, ear, neck, and then shoulder, and coming down to whole body, including palm and soul. It takes a three, four days, and then last for five, six days. Okay. So this is, you have to describe, this is how it goes, okay? And then density, okay, I can write it down. Density is, I can write this more on the shoulder, with a macrologist made in coliase, okay? Coliases, coliases and fuses. And then the rashes, which could last for the four, six days. And then slowly, it fades over the, from like this, and the head to downwards. And it started from the head, and then again, fading starts from the, from above, okay, down, okay? So little bit disconnections, you know, may be present, but 
it's not very severe in other diseases like slight healing of like but which does not leave any mark on your body skin so complete recovery takes from the so okay, recovery from the illness will take somewhere 10 to 7 days from the onset of the rash okay so rash started okay 6 7 days or 7 10 days maybe have again this sort of <clears throat> clinical period okay so how to recognize this very important okay you cannot write fever cough and then rash no so you have to write in detail okay so then we could understand figure out what you are writing about the fever rash so this is now you can see so the patient may come to you like that no? you have to ask the questions again okay fever for how many days and after for how long i know on what day okay uh you got this rash after four days in before that there is no fever running in most coffee and which for on fourth day this sort of rash is given you definitely clinically reported diagnosis of okay maybe the clinical diagnosis so this rash is not you on rashes you can see that modified version which is not now existed so as in clothing in their ex after the exposure of ex sorry exposure to the measles and somebody could have immunoglobin those will have the longer duration the atypical sort of you know, not the classic variant of the clinical manifestation but it could be longer duration of the incubation okay when it's 21 days or maybe it's, okay mild form of okay so, exposure those with another is a typical rash that was long which is not does not exist now between 1963 and 1970 there was a kill back in values okay but the rashes would be like the prominent in the creases maybe macular hemorrhagic vesicular this different sort of thing. so many types of okay and which is which is not a classical form of uh, your measles this is the conditions and the way they could get but we don't use the kill back in our days in the but this sort of thing part this kind of story so the patient came to you okay you have a diagnosis now you expect some complications hmm? so what could be the complications hmm? so in an acute and then uh, long term again okay? so the acute and the complication usually more in pronounced in mean, less than one year in infant and an adult okay they could have maybe they were ranging from the name ah to less severe sudden serious sort of diarrhea to pneumonia okay? the first we say the diarrheal disease and then acute otitis media pneumonia encephalitis okay it's in low in state it's not always it's in one okay after one to 10 months of progress and that is quite progressive and then death initial is quite Uh, danger side is symptom sometimes the patient would have keratitis because measles virus okay are infections and there's uh, uh, some an association of the low retinol okay in the blood so retinol you know that is needed for your eyes okay? low retinol disease so that's why the treatment we are giving and so on vitamin e will come after all so in a chronic or the long term again that is sub acute sclerosing and encephalitis ssp in short in abbreviated form ssp so they could sclerosing and encephalitis which is very rare but it happens then it is fatal almost it's like one in one lakh okay there some less and clinical manifestation which comes another six to 15 years it takes it's not immediately this so which could be like the behavior changes of the you know in a well bonder was it give it would have some behavior changes or more the motor or uh, function disorders like an eye chronic jerk excessive okay? different so if okay clinical manifestation then almost fatal there's no treatment as such and which is very rare so you, the thing is that some 
neurological, chronic sort of a history occur, and then you could also ask for the any measles in the past, one of the differential diagnoses, maybe subacute sclerosing encephalitis, manifestation of this disease that could be eh? considered. Okay, so. This is acute and then chronic. This is the what? Sorry. My computer got hang. Okay. Just a minute, okay. So this is a clinical impact of the measles. Lungs, what will happen is well nourished and versus well nourished. That is a low immune system. Okay. Temporary respiratory illness, not very severe enough, but it's threatening pneumonia. Also pneumonia. Ear otitis media, more severe, public dispersive, ulcerating form. Okay. He uh, was also in your buccal mucosa maybe like. Conjunctivitis severe enough to leave it into sometimes blindness, okay? Rashes, yes, macular papillary rickets are very type shown in, in a picture, but that could be the hemorrhagic rashes may occur. That's black measles in the skin. Okay? That is malnourished version of okay? clinical manifestation. Intestinal tract, there's usually no lesion in it, but sometimes the diarrhea. Okay, exacerbates malnutrition, false growth, impairs recovery. So this is a vicious cycle. You don't eat and eat all, and you're this is how. No immune, no growth. I cannot eating. In this urinary tract, there's no detectable urine. Okay, there's virus. Till now, no known complications. So this is what. So in overall impact in the malnourished children and uh, poor outcome. So you think on uh, a rash and fever, the patient may come, uh, no, come to you, then you will have some, uh, what other condition could uh, mimic? So these are the differential dynamics for it, like Bella. Okay, and now we're going to deal in the next slides of the next topic, will be the rubella. Not the rubella, okay, this is rubella. Other enterovirus should become the adenovirus. You could have mild rash and fever, so you will get confusion. So you have to know the differential diagnosis. Rhodiola infantum. Okay, here the what? Uh, some as rashes appears, fever disappears. There's some okay, some uh, specific clinical uh, course manifestation like the rash appears and then fever disappears. Rickettsia usually face out spared. Rashes, there's no, eh? you don't see much rashes in the faces. Meninga coxima, okay, coxima, you have quickly auto deteriorating sequence of patient, okay, patient is sick and the petechia is sort of rashes. Patient looking very sick. Kawasaki, another disease, crack lip, you know, that's when it. Crack leaves, edema, hand, and scaling cervical, lymph node patchy with rashes, might be patches. So that's been one of the differential diagnoses I'm coming to mind. At the end, you can put some drug rashes as well. So, how do you diagnose? Usually? Clinically, we put the diagnosis. Yeah. If you say this, say we okay, you won't like it. In your opinion, Lipopenia, neutropenia, or something. And the microscopy, you want to send of any pathology. Okay, it's a multi nucleated giant cell to this inclusion with inclusion body in pathogen for the measles, which can be nasopharyngeal, probably in secretion order. You can send. Okay. It's more rapid and practical than the virus isolation. Another method you can apply is. is Direct or indirect and even the flowers needs to demonstrate what are antigens and cells from again NPS urine or okay, taste in urine two to two to five days in it after the evidence of the rash. 
So when to collect the urine is proper, you can make it. Okay, the ten days is no. After the onset of the thrush. Okay, within the two to five days. Another is what? Would you like to culture your virus? What virus is there? Then you use them. Some primary human kidney or okay, cells are being used. And this. Practically, you know, yes, we, we don't do. We clinically good. Or maybe you can send some antibody tests and diagnosis, serological tests. Antibody type is right there, four fold between acute and then conversion phase. If you, if, if you have any IgA specific, you can send also an IgA specific only. This is viral. That could be lasting for third day to one month, okay? which is quite accurate. Methods are given, different methods can be the LSA method, hemorrhagic injection, or maybe complement of action. These are the methods which can be applied for the detection of the antibody of the serological test. So basically, a viral isolation, the antibody, and then what else you can do? Okay, this one. Okay, direct and direct inflorescence. But basically, clinically, we put the diagnosis. And if you want to say, then the antibody can be identified in spot. But virus culture, we don't do. Sometimes teaching me a PCR of it or interesting in that academically. <coughs> so the patient has been heard, diagnosed. Okay, now you made differential diagnosis. Now your job is to. Your job is to what? Your job is to treat the patient, of course. And then, so, so, so since it's a viral disease, we don't have any medication as such, any particular medication. So we, usually it is supported care. So with cures, good nutrition, ethical food intake, treatment of and, and don't let it dehydrate and dehydration condition. If there is a diarrhea you're vomiting, you have to take care, taken care of. Okay? Antibody. So antibiotic should be prescribed to treat your ear, and, okay, eyes infection or pneumonia is the evidence. Otherwise, no routine institution of antibiotic. So treatment of options in the developing countries like the two doses I mentioned, the retinol is in essence to low condition during uh, infection, okay. So two doses of vitamin A supplements can be given 24 hours apart. Okay. So the doses I can give you two, two years and below two years to one year. And, okay, and then in the six months, like we happen, 50,000, one lakh or two lakhs. Okay, about two years, one, two lakhs. So these are the doses are different doses, okay, but two doses okay we have one step and then after 24 hours one okay one lakh 50, 50 000, one lakh that depends on the age okay 50, 000. step is less than six months like this one okay and it's six to one month one year and above one year level one lakh or maybe two lakh okay there's a the capsule side so basically you should know two doses should be given one dose start given that okay and then next day after 24 hours apart one more dose so it prevents eye damage okay and blindness also reduces the number of death from measles by 50 percent so that's the role of vitamin a So outcome, if you look at the outcome, less than 1% of the mortality with uncomplicated risk, okay? In immunocompetent patients, well nourished, but high, of course, malnourished, I mentioned earlier, and in immunocompromised, and to lesser extent with age, okay? So how, the, okay, immunity would look like? The immunity will be life long, means, once you contract with it, this disease, or you come out of this disease, you will have a 
life long immunity. That is, you're vaccinated with the real virus. No? So if you are not infected, then prevention should be avoid contact and the vaccine. Okay. So that is what you know that schedules of that or national schedule of vaccines. So when we institute here, nine, yeah. nine, nine months, nine, seven, nine, 15 months, actually anymore, we don't have any monks, okay? That is only measures in rebel, okay? MR. Mom, we don't have. So in the Western country, you have MMR, okay? Which is it? A time is nine, 9, 12, 9 months, and 12 to 15 months, okay? This is the preventive aspect. So, is there any questions regarding this? Yes. Otherwise, I'll go more to another topic. So, another is rubella, not a rubella, okay? That was a rubella. That's a rubella. Sometimes we call it three days measles or my German measles, right? Since the, the name is, is taken, I feel because the, this. Uh, rashes last for three days. Most of the time. Sometimes five days, but three days. That's a three day three, three days disease. What German disease? What is rubella? Rubella is also known as German or three days disease. It is also an exanthematism. Then it is rash, rash disease caused by rubella virus. But this group belongs to the Toga variant, okay? As is, it is also a single strand. You know the RNA virus usually all single stranded, okay? Except Toga virus. Eh? No, except Rhoda virus, I think, if you know it. So, the, which is characterized by my constitutional symptoms, okay? Maybe melanite, okay? Sort of like. And a low grade fever of there is a little bit of conjunctivitis, widespread, okay? Rash of the microbes, red microbes within the day. This is within the day. Okay, this is how you different setting points are there. Within a day or in, after 24 hours of 12 hours only, you will have the rash, and which is not in, not in measles, case of measles. Yeah, because Where did the rash appear? Okay, he says that yesterday fever, and I have rash on exclusion of measles. There, this is not possible. So maybe a rubella or some other forms. And then lasting for four days with almost complete recovery. This not. If you look at going go back into a little bit of history, okay, that's in the no back the two hundred years ago. It is, has it, the Australian, okay, Australian ophthalmologist, his name is, okay, Norman Gregg in 1941, okay, he okay, came across that this virus has a teratogenic property, that is what, teratogenic, okay, that's why we do torch, infection soon as a torch, one is rubella, teratogenic virus. Take a vacuum, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So that's very important. So briefly about this epidemiology, okay, of course, around then, uh, around the year, of course, uh, the epidemics of 20, 25 years this year, even in 1960 US, there were 2,000, such 20,000. 20,000 CRS means congenital revelation, death and abortion. And long back, okay. Now, the due to the vaccination, it has got down to in 1974, there came down to you know, only 40 cases. So, drastic in you know, CRS, okay, that is congenital revelation. As a person who is getting infected, which is not much affected, the problem is with the your coming baby, okay, newborn. So, more than now, Western countries are 95% of the eliminated. So this is one uh, study is not ready, but in a developing country, one fourth of babies born in developing countries suffering from the congenital rubella syndrome. 
because we have routine use of rubella rice. This is one. So that's why now we are also very conscious that we are institute. We have instituted our learning. Okay. Rubella. Okay. So how will get any infected? I mean, this natural infection occurs only in humans. Okay, this in human through the direct droplet and contact with the fluid secretion, secretion is like in pictures. You can see. <laughs> So this is roughly the peaks, and then usually in late winter and an early spring, most of the time. There's another approximately 25 to 50 percent of the such incidences are asymptomatic, like this coronavirus. No, we have to the asymptomatic. The patient doesn't suffer much. There is a potential to, depending on the point of view, so dangerous. What is happening right now in case of? So this is also this virus has to have 20 to 25 percent of the case in asymptomatic case. Patient doesn't come with any clinical manifestation. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you hear? Okay. So maximum communicable period of the virus lasts for five days prior to about a week after the rash. Okay. That's the rash is the morning rash. Prior to okay, five days prior to rash, and after okay, uh, we can a week after the rashes. So communicability period. That's an infectivity. Okay. So you precaution quite linear when you it gives you and how long. So this is in measures. You have the four days to prior to four days, and prior to and then uh, rash. And four or five days or seven days after the rash, I'll say highly infective. So you have to avoid this patient. Now we can again sometime it happens. What is that? And now, okay, now there is no carrier state. Okay, this virus is happening, but the reserve, reservoir exists uh, exists entirely in the human. So only in the human okay, it happens. So active human cases, entirely in active active human cases. So it is not contagious, highly contagious, as measles. Okay, it's contagious, but not as in, in compare a comparison with measles. So human are the only soul, opposed to no other like animals or something like that. So suppose your baby and a baby got infected, infants, okay? They may shed the virus, okay? And nasal filling secretion and also urine for over a year. Urine my the baby gets. Congenital uh, rebellion syndrome, then you could shed bio uh, so your urine over a year. Is another epidemiologic significance, okay? You don't understand, and then you get contact with the baby. So, Togo virus, this is a program I'm telling briefly about the virus. You know, the genus of your virus, single strand, 50 the size, 70 nanometer, and virus, multiplying the cytoplasm of infected cells, use unstable with the heat, okay, UV, and the cold, relatively stable. And we are the only host. This is the structure you can see. Like a, like a protein, icosahedral, capsid, are in a single stranded positive sense. There are segregates in negative sense, is a positive sense. And then which is surrounded by a bilayer lipid membrane. Hmm? You know the boso. Huh? <laughs> that is what. Nepali <laughs> boso. That that's the boso you got to. Yeah, it's all in the coronavirus. Alcohol used it, sixty percent above six million thinking, destroyed this lipid and this is a dysfunctional. Right? Anyway, the pathogen is briefly about this patient obscure. We don't know how you know, does a okay, cell injury or death occurs if okay? as the patient at this uh, sorry virus can access to uh, your body to a respiratory tract, okay, and then Invasion to your mucosa of the respiratory epithelium, consequently, they gave into where it does not. 
Play for, okay, and then the replication will take place, and then same thing. Okay, and they come back from to your blood system, which is primary value in it, and then which goes across the whole lip. Another uh, sorry reticle in the system like the narrow or the system, okay, and then whole viscera can go or maybe skin, okay. That is secondary. No, no, primary organ that reaches there, and then RES is there, it's involved again, RES, you know, that is reticular in the system, and that system, okay, we have spleen or male, or other bone marrow, layer, okay, so then, there again, they will have multiplication, and then from there, secondary value may person comes up, and the clinical manifestation will take place. So virus can be recovered from the pharyngeal secretions, blood, okay, additional leukocytes, congenital swabs, and swabs and okay, synovials, fluids. So rivella rashes occur serve as a site of the rivella virus. Sequence. However, this rash as a result of an, an antigen antibody reaction rather than the manifests the direct viral damage is considered like this with antibody antibodies, not a direct manifestation. So as the antibody rises up, as I've shown in the graph, like in previous slide in measures and complete, your recovery starts. So how they will manifest in this patient manifest pattern of incubation death. Definitely there are a period of two to three weeks. Thanks. Uh, earlier they were mentioned about uh, asymptomatic patient, that is 50 plus 25 which tends to be. Throat on, you have a little bit of mild fever, a little bit of sore throat, discomfort in nose, take off, and then by smell. This is a on first. Now, another thing should be accompanied by a rash, and this is a rash disease. So, the which gives the clinical picture. So, that is a rash, macular rash within a day. Okay, that's quite important. And no discommission. Right? The history you have to ask like that. You know, then my favorite word, okay, rash went. Okay, within a day or so, okay, on the 36 hours, you have the, the rash initially appears never I face strong and then all this, but extended over the entire week within a day. Okay, there's expansion of the characteristic expansion of the spread of uh, uh, rash, which also differentiate from the measles, so measles is started from the okay, face, here yeah, is also face by hairline, but it does not, within a day or your whole body will be covered with your rash. It may be one or two days in the face, you will be slowly going down, okay? It takes four, five, six days to, end up, to reach your soul. So you can ask the right? because that's why the important to write, or you know, you should know, you must know that the pattern of the rash. And then clinical management. That's what comes in the don't buy fever, rice, rash, and I run in well, It does not differentiate anything. Okay? Any disease could manifest like that. You write like the right. If you're supposed to earn a rice for five marks, you will get the one marks too. It's not a characteristic of the, any diseases. So, very careful when you write. So it initially appears on the face and then upper trunk and but extends over the entire within a okay, day. It's not a middles. So last sometimes I know short short two hours to five days. So you get it three days, okay? We have the three days middles as well. Not always seeing sometimes. Sometimes you will have some arthralgia, okay, joint pain, gum play, arthritis. Those are the transient things, especially in adult and women, especially women. And others you can click in which is lymphadenopathy, which is quite tender, with the regions are occipital, okay, posterior, auricle, and anterior sarcoidosis. So you got to palpate that place. So postnatal rebel is rather than uh, postnatal sometimes, you know, baby born with it. That's uh, postnatal when it's postnatal, okay, rebel is rather mild and complete recovery can be expected 
three, four. That means we, you know, we like the post is we have done, not the internal. Okay, internal training infection, not the internal infection. It's postnatal means so after the birth of the baby, if you contract the rubella virus, three, four days, okay, clinical period, and then not much patients in there. So this I will discuss about. There's nothing specific to tell about, okay? Same thing. So this is the picture of the rash. Huh? This rash is tends to be within a okay, day or which will have spread, get spread on all over the body, which is not a characteristic of measles. Measles takes a four, okay? First in the face, and slowly over three, four days, and it takes time to cover all the bodies of us. Then down up to soul. I'll put this in the back of my head. So this is within a day, within the fever, we have a, hmm? oh, this is not a measles. Okay. So how would you diagnose? And that's a clinical, you have made now. Now you just confirm clinical. Sometimes clinics are unreliable in adult, no features, and sometimes asymptomatic. No features of rashes give clues to definitive diagnosis of rubella. Other virus could also give up. It's no typical source of uh, rashes. But you can, by history, you can uh, make some you know, ideas. But as a one day, if you go a little bit middle and lies, and then rashes, and you know, within a one or 36 hours, you, know, you have to cover the whole body. One of the you know, patient doesn't look sick on top of that. Sick looking, that's quite another issue, okay? Viral disease really doesn't look much sick. They're playful. So, gives, and then you want to put like an um, uh, CBC, does not have any specific uh, finding. It could have ligopenia, neutropenia, mild from another, another thing is serological, you want to reveal specific IgM. What's it? Okay, email. Immunosorbent technique can be used because I use this specific, which is quite commonly used now. More than 90 percent of sensitivity, as well as specificity. Sensitivity and that, that's more than, and that's why we will especially IgM time is sent. Other, some other, like isolations and identification of virus that does exist, but clinically, one always not the end case of this. Nasopharyngeal. Secretion or tour swap taken within six days prior or after entrance of the rash. So cell culture in a shell while antigen. Okay, if you want to culture it, in a shell while. Then antigens can be dictated. Immunofluorescent and methods can be used. But basically, with clinical and some and then serological. Hygiene. Viral comes you can do with the rabbit, kidneys, also, okay, and we also have to use that okay, for the virus culture. If you want to specify, then viral PCR can be run. PCR. Now it is PCR, so popular in coronavirus. PCR, PCR. So it's not much available in our So fundamentally, yeah, you must be answering these other methods can be applied, but what are practical in that practical way can then be selected sometimes. Serological means clinical as well as serological. So differential diagnosis is the same. Just you remove, okay, a place here, rubella. Other remaining down is same. Uh, we wrote in the beginning, you know, in the middle section. That's the reason that there is a rubella. The rubella of the ambitious rest center. Okay. Dervari, Rajal Vakare, insects, Ericaceae, Meningococcinia, Kawasaki, and Trump, and all these are fever with rashes. That's what. what are the complications you expect from the energy? Well, this is this. This another issue. Sometimes you will have within the three weeks or two weeks of period of time, the patient may come to you, little gun blade. Or maybe the PTK means in the rashes, okay? And then PTK rashes. Mm. Of, no, GIB is not very off, that often. Hematuria. Then usually these are disorders. 
self limiting okay so you got to ask any patient comes with this is still you got to retrospect it two weeks back you have any rashes okay my fever which lasted for three four days and disappeared oh yes maybe then you can this is a complication complication uh transient complication of rubella so another is uh, arthritis when the patient come with them joint pain mm? within a, one week okay and the self limiting disease is and you get joint joints are small joints not a big joints so this encephalitis which is very rare okay one in a 5000 within a seven days of rash let me come to the neurological signs and headache vomiting and the difference in supply the seizure maybe so which is very rare okay less, less. another is progressive rubella in supply the prp extremely rare like a ssp which mentioned earlier right in, in measles virus can be isolated dies within 2 to 5 years after onset of the disease so there was no cure you know progressive deterioration of the condition of the patient at the ultimate the suffering okay So treatment. What would you like to treat? Like to treat? Yeah. Your answer will be definitely okay. self-limited and supported. If you fever, you give you some. If you itchy, and then it. what about? Not indicate. So, so uh, immunity. Immunity. Antibody yeah. appears. Okay. Immunity is lifelong. That's important. Okay. Immunity is life. Lifelong okay. immunity. That's finished. What type of immunity you have been? Long time, long, long life. Okay. So now it's just a little bit of you should be concerned about. We are concerned about congenital rubella syndrome. Okay, CRS in short form, because of infection in your during the pregnancy period. Okay. And then, so. <coughs> Pregnancy during the baby is growing, and the cells are highly multiplying. They are multiplying, and so virus will like to get into, and then it disrupt your distribution. And again, growth and then cells, okay, cells grow. Fetal cells are reduced in number, so this result in the result in fewer number of cells after the birth, leading to degenerate, okay, deranged and hypoplastic organ development. So that's teratogenic effect leading to fetal pattern. So that's what the main clinic events of person and like we have. postnatal rubella we have not we have only done the congenital rubella that is quite concerned so mainly events and you can see that okay now during the pregnancy intrauterine infection that means okay intro okay intra uterine infection okay the <coughs> rubella in Infection as rather that depends on the trimester. Okay, look at the first trimester patient, and if the baby gets contracted, the mother gets contracted in the first trimester of the eh, pregnancy, it will lead to the eighty-five percent of cases abnormality. That definitely you are going to diagnose your baby now. Okay, you have to have some problem. And let's look if she got contracted with the disease of or so sorry, second no, trimester trimesters. So defect can turn sixteen to. Sixteen percent. That means it is right. Drastically, it goes down five times, right? Five, six times. Okay, over the twenty weeks period. That means second time over twenty weeks of the pregnancy. That's fetal. Fetal defects are uncommon. So be cautious. Okay, so IUGR which is benefits of IUGR. Okay, fetal death, spontaneous. Okay, abortion. This is only happened. The viral excretion in various I've mentioned about the secretion newborn up to infected within one year or even eighteen months up to so just part they are infected period okay infected period those are infected only okay? infected baby one so clinical findings of the congenital rubella syndrome the clinical findings are what maybe transient effect and that infants okay permanent manifestation may not be apparent at birth it's not so it's always been. Okay, sometimes it's recognized during the first year of fever, so that's what it's very medical history is very important. History of what? 
Rashes. Rashes, that is, is there any rubella like syndrome? Okay, like the one, the fever, the other, no? I know which patient might not forget, um, sorry, maybe asymptomatic, we don't know, maybe off, symptomatic then two, three days and it lasts and it's not very severe, she might forget it, okay? So you have to take proper the history. So permanent manifestation may not frequent as well. Developmental abnormalities appear during the childhood and adolescence. So what is the classical trait of the rubella syndrome? Virtually all organs will affect it, but sometimes it's just, okay, cl classical trait of the rubella, that is deafness, okay, cellular deafness, okay, deafness into organ cortina, you know, your hair cells are there in your ear, in your ear, that's what they love to, and uh, insect area. Okay, now cataract, and then cardiac, Abnormalities like this, congenital heart diseases, like this, pulmonary stenosis is maybe okay. That's it. Some other many defects are there. Okay, so but the cardiac abnormalities, congenital heart disease. That's it. Deafness. Okay, and then ear, eye, and then cardiac. That's what other manifestations like the growth retardations that could happen. Basically, may present within a rash, a hepatitis, megaly, jaundice, on a newborn. Like during them. So, and the meaning in the flight AC and the defects lead to moderate to profound mental retardation. So that's, this is called, okay. Congenital to be listened. So this is very poor for upcoming babies. So this is, we must be very careful, okay. And especially childbearing, okay. Women, okay, exactly. Other neurological manifestations of problem imbalance, motor skills, they can come after growing. Preschool children is a little bit altered. A rare complication I mentioned, pants of flight is, okay, now occurring in second decade of life, okay, with the congenital rebel syndrome, may progress to, of course, ultimately death. So how would you diagnose? Of course, this is the one clinical setup. We have history, ox and the mother. Okay, uh, so history from mother side, maternal side, clearly, and look at the clinical picture, any hepatitis, megalo born here, again, jaundice, or PTK, rashes, or a baby, microcephaly hits, some, okay. So it gives rise to some, some suspicious about uh, some intuitive infection, maybe they distort, so torch infection, or uh, component B, uh, rubella. So then, and that's clinical, then you want to send what? Serological tests, again, send that a rubella antibody. Antibodies of, we are not Ig, okay? IgM, we need an IgM. IgM in a newborn, newborn baby, it produces one IgM, specific to rubella, then, okay, this is the diagnosis, okay? Not the Ig, the Ig because Ig passes through your mother, it could be a mother's mom, okay? It passes through your placenta and it will get it to the baby. So we just not we don't consider this as a positive. So for the positive, IgM why? Because it's a it's a macro molecule which does not cross the placenta. So that means the baby is producing. If you and a baby blood body, if you get then IgM means now baby is reacting reacting means this is rubella. Okay, congenital. Not the IgG. IgG can pass from your mother's of okay, so reflection of the mother's uh, immunoglobin, which she has carried in the past. So treatment, there's no specific again. This viral, there's no specific treatment. CR scan the preventer. So by that's the immunization, immunization, immunization of the young children and the teenage girl. Remains the best options to prevent the criminal treatment. Not not only women, but male also to be. You know, so everyone should get because you can transmit to your, okay, girl, okay, that's what. So everyone should be immunized, not to have this sort of disorders in a small new generation. Right? I mean, <clears throat> the component of rubella in we have. The, we don't have M MMR, okay? We have MR. So vaccine can be given, okay? MR. 
So prevention, that is MMR vaccine. Those who have an MMR can get an MMR vaccine, live attenuated version against measles, mumps, and rubella. Okay. Which is aged around, we can mention, of 12 to 12, 12, 15 months, with second dose before the start of the school, four to five years. Okay, the second dose basically is not necessary, but it is just give, uh, to produce the immunity. And those are failed to give, uh, failed to. Uh, mm, List number just two to five percent of those fail to develop measles immunity. Okay, after the first dose in the United States, this is United States, right? They give in four for five. We don't have them uh, four and five years, years, years. We don't have the MR, we just give them five to two and nine months and uh, somewhere 12. Months. So, here we end the any questions. Do you have any questions, student? <laughs>